For some analysis, let's speak to William Davison. He's a senior Ethiopia analyst for the International Crisis Group and is based in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. William, good to have you on the program. This fighting really seems to be getting worse on a daily basis. First airstrikes, now we're hearing about a ground incursion. Do you expect it to get worse in the coming days? Um, I think that's that's quite possible. Um, just the first thing to be clear about here, the fighting is in northern Ethiopia, but actually it's primarily concentrated in Amhara region, the north of Amhara region. Um, and that's because in July, um, after the federal military withdrew from Tigray, um, the Tigray forces went on the offensive um, into Amhara, but also Afar um, for various regions. But yes, we are still in that phase of the conflict. There, there has been something of a lull in September, um, after the Tigray forces met some initial resistance, but we now seem to be entering a new period of intensified conflict, which looks like it's going to be concentrated for now um, in northern um, Amhara or, and also parts of uh, bordering Afar region. Uh, William, do you get a sense that either side wants a diplomatic, peaceful resolution to this, or do they think only a military solution is going to end this ongoing conflict? Nominally, both sides talk about um, peaceful solutions and negotiations. For example, the federal government, when it withdrew from Tigray, it said it was enacting a unilateral humanitarian ceasefire. Um, and it said that that was subsequently broken by the Tigray forces. But on their side, the Tigray leadership said that it was not a unilateral ceasefire and it was more like a siege um, on Tigray. The problem is that the conditions attached um, to negotiations and therefore any peace process are incompatible. Um, there is the territorial issue in Western Tigray, for example. Amhara region um, has taken that over, claiming it as their historical territory since the beginning of the war in November. That position is backed up by the Ethiopian federal government and the Tigray leadership and commanders are absolutely reset on militarily reclaiming that territory, uh, Western Tigray. So there is talk of negotiations, but in reality, the the positions are incompatible, and that is what is leading to continued fighting. And this continued fighting is, of course, also leading to a humanitarian situation that is deepening every day. How desperate right now is that situation in Tigray? And do people even have any access to humanitarian aid? Um, as your correspondent um, Samuel was, was stressing, there is also developing humanitarian emergency outside of Tigray in the areas where the conflict has spread to Amhara and Afar uh, because of the Tigray forces offensive. Um, but I would say that the situation inside Tigray is by far the most serious. Um, it is because of the 10 months of conflict. At times, the Tigray has been almost completely cut off. So no trade, no aid, no medicine, no fuel, no banking services, no telecoms, no electricity. Now, that is kind of the situation we have now. Um, the flows of trade and aid into Tigray are at a, at a real trickle. Um, and the federal government and its allies seem primarily to be responsible for that. And also the, federal, um, the federally controlled services like banking, telecommunications, electricity, they are not being provided to Tigray, um, partly because the federal government considers Tigray's leaders um, to be a terrorist organization and, and unconstitutional. So there is a very severe situation inside Tigray. Um, the agricultural planting season has been considerably disrupted, all sorts of other factors. And you know, there is very serious concerns that we could see um, the onset of a famine there. Oh, very serious concerns indeed. William Davison speaking to us from Nairobi. Thank you so much for your analysis.